one on Facebook. Thanks for joining. Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Carlos Balasquita, and Alex King here on this Tuesday, October the 30th, 2018. It is 4 p.m. New York time. That makes it 1 p.m. Los Angeles time and 9 p.m. London time. So that covers all the major time zones. I'm sorry I haven't learned Adelaide <laughs> times yet, but I will learn that one so I can announce that one too because we got to give equal credit to the North and South hemispheres. But guys, Carlos, Alex, how are you guys doing? What's happening? I'm great. Good. How is everybody else doing? Are I'm you, wonderful. You're wonderful. <laughs> yeah, just enjoying this uh, this beautiful Tuesday in sunny California. Yeah, sunny California. Exactly. I mean, it's always beautiful in sunny California. I mean, <laughs> when is it not beautiful in sunny California, right? Yeah, it, it rains once every ten years or so. So <laughs> you know, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Life in the desert, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So we are, of course, live streaming today to the Facebook Law of Attraction Changed My Life group, and uh, we hope that uh, people are tuning in and joining us as we record our podcast for the day. We're going to take on a topic that uh, Alex and Carlos had kind of discussed previously a few days back, and I thought it was a good one when I, when I heard about it, talking about, you know, kind of telling our own stories about you know what we've been doing to create our own careers, what successes we've had, you know, what... Uh, roadblocks we found along the way, how did we deal with them, and most importantly, how did we tie in the law of attraction to them? I thought that was a good idea. Which one of you guys came up with that? That was a good one. That was Carlos. That was Carlos? Oh, okay. Yeah. Carlos, you are a <laughs> fountain of ideas. I mean, you just keep coming up with them. If it's a good idea, it was my idea. Oh, okay. if it was, uh, <laughs> Yeah, if it's questionable afterwards, then, then uh, you know, no comment, no comment. <laughs> Have you ever considered a career in politics? No, 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 forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, before we get into it, I want to make sure I get our promos in. Uh, first of all, uh, if you are a subscriber to our podcast, or even if you're not a subscriber, please become one, first of all. Um, and most people know how to do that. But basically, you, you go to your uh, podcast app, or if you're on an iPhone, you can do it through uh, the podcast app or through the iTunes on an Android. You have to actually install a podcast app if you don't have one. Um, we recommend the Google podcast app. It's a good one. Um, but uh, the easy way to do it is just go to our homepage, LOAToday.net. There are um, links there that you can click on to uh, basically walk you through the process. So become a subscriber. And for both new and existing subscribers, please post out there on social media. Some of you have been doing it, and it has been helping a lot. But we need more. We need more because we need to get more people <laughs> aware of how to get their daily dose of happy. Um, in fact, uh, one of the – I mentioned uh, being a politician, and obviously that was totally tongue-in-cheek – but uh, <laughs> it, it is a, a topic that, you know, politics is a topic that's bothering a lot of people here in the United States as we're approaching the midterm elections. And one of the things that I keep noticing over and over and over again is how the population as a whole, because they don't understand the importance of getting into that happy zone, they certainly don't understand the importance of the law of attraction for the most part, keep focusing on everything they don't like about the other party. And that's mm. not a healthy thing to do. So... That's one reason why I keep saying, please keep posting out there. We need more and more people to find out that there is a place where, first of all, they can feel better just by listening to it. And second of all, get the perspective that, you know what, you don't have to keep focusing on all that negativity. You can actually focus on good stuff. So, yeah, please get the word out there. We appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Um, the way you phrase this one, Carlos, is a little bit different from the way I phrased it. I phrased it in terms of creating your career using the law of attraction. You had a, a more of a broader approach to, you know, uh, taking basic principle of the law of attraction and applying it in a wide range of areas in our lives, but particularly where careers are concerned. So I'm going to kick it off to you first. Tell us more about what sure. your vision was, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess my idea is very aligned with yours, Walt. Um, the reason I wanted to broaden it a little bit is because I feel that it's uh, it's pretty difficult to talk about um, the law of attraction and then to talk about career in a vacuum. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because we do have wives, we have kids, we have friends, we have family, we have um, responsibilities. Um, so to kind of you know you know pigeonhole ourselves and and, and and kind of only talk about that, I think a lot of the context is where the learnings come from. You know, how did you, because a lot of people, you know, 
they talk about, let's say, oh, I want a career in, uh, I want to be a lawyer, right? And so, so how do I get started? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, oh, well, who's going to be affected? How many, you know, how, how long am I going to have to go to school? How, how much debt am I going to have? And, and how is that going to affect my family? How is it going to affect my future? And, and, you know, all those things. So, um, yeah, so very closely aligned with, you know, uh, that same idea. But, but just uh, if, if need be, you know, we can kind of, you know, uh, dive out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, for me, um, it really started as far as law of attraction and just being uh, aware. Or actually, I, it happened for me uh, being unaware because, uh, again, I think I, told, I said this uh, in uh, one of the podcasts, but my dad gave me a uh, Tony Robbins set of tapes at 12 years old, right? Right, right. Um, Unusual gift yeah, for a 12-year-old. About, <laughs> What was that? I, 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 I said an unusual gift for a 12 year old, a good one, but an is, unusual. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is an unusual gift. Um, but yeah, really, it just talked about taking action to, and the power of, of decision, right? And just, just you know, because I think that's where we were talking about this just a few minutes ago, but a lot of people get stuck, right? Because um, I want to do this, I want to do that. Um, but we call, we call it the uh, paralysis by analysis, right? You just think about it so much that you actually don't end up doing anything. You just mm-hmm. kind of sit around and you think about it or something. And it just, be, it's always a dream. And then later, you know, and, and people like Gary Vee and, and, you know, other notable uh, social, social media personalities talk about this all the time. As far as um, once you get to 80, you can't, you know, there's no going back, right? You, you, <laughs> you can't live with those regrets. Regret is like the worst thing that you can that you can have. So oh, oh, okay, now I'm know, 61, and, so you're scaring me now. You're, you're just scaring me. I hope you realize that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, but th- this is all context, right? This is how I got into thinking about um, that. Life is short, and 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 really, uh, you should live with passion, right? You should live with and do something that you know gets you out of bed every day. Um, you know, makes you happy, or at least gives you some kind of drive towards towards happiness, right? Mm, uh, for me, it was, um, I, uh, oh, go ahead. Nope. I think you still have the floor. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. I, th- I, I thought you said, had said something there, Walt. Um, it was just, I was but, practicing uh, my ventriloquism. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but for me it was, uh, so I was in junior college and me and, and me and school were not, um, we're not clicking well, you know, just, I don't know if my personality high school, I was a, uh, average student. Uh, I think two point and some change. <laughs> I like the way you said that. That's, that was good. That's neither here nor there, right? That's that's all water under the bridge now. But uh, it makes I nice just never had that, like that love for school, right? And so I uh, I kind of dabbled, and I was like, oh, you know what? I, I want to be a police officer. So I went and I and I was like, I was going through all the process and here in California, they had this, this budget cut. So there was, um, there was no jobs all over California. Um, so there was this one place in Santa, it's called Santa Barbara and they had seven openings. And so I went and I applied with, I think it was like 1700 people mm-hmm. and turns out, and I'm going to keep this part of it short, but turns out um, I got all the way to the end to the chief interview and there was a budget cut and they said, we can only take five now. Yeah. And the way that we're going to choose is by school. Oh. So five of you have degrees and two of you do not. So I think, I mean, everything else being equal, that, you know, for us is the term, determining factor. So, and this was something that was, I mean, they had, uh, they had found me an apartment uh, for the academy. They had, I mean, everything was done, basically done deal. So this is something that was it felt like it was taken from me. It was, it was in my hand and it was taken from me. And so I, I don't know if any of you guys have experienced something similar to this, but where yeah, your hopes are all the way up, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's no further up that they can go and you crash from there. And, and that could be a very uh, dismal place, right? And, oh man, what am I going to do now? Cause I had left school. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I went to check. I thought maybe I can go back to school and school let me know. Well, now since you, you know, unenrolled now you have to now you're in the back of the line for classes you can't even enroll for another year and then a transfer after that is going to be another year and a half so the the future was not looking like it was you know very bright right there was just a a lot of options and not really a a lot of places to go and i think a a lot of times we get into that place and um 
that's where it's the, the most difficult to manifest things, right? Because it's, you can't see the how. And I think in those times, it's important to really think about what it is that you want and very focus on that. The how um, will reveal itself. So um, a lot of times we talk about, or I say this, um, it's like driving a car at night, right? You have the, the, your, your lights on so you can see just a little, just what you need, right? You can't see, you know, a mile in front and you can't, but you can see just what you need to, you know, you can see the line, you can see the light. And I think that life is a lot like that. It's, um, you kind of have to just drive to the light, right? And then see where, you, where you're going to go from there. Um, but yeah, so that was a big disappointment. And, and, um, but again, in, in taking action and, and I said, okay, um, I was told that about the school. So let me figure, figure something out, right? Law of attraction, the universe, right? The law of attraction. I was at the, uh, at the river on a vacation thing with my, my girlfriend at the time and her sister was a, uh, um, I don't know what her title was. She worked at the college, the, the local university. And she said, Hey, Carlos, um, you know, I've been talking about this with, with her and, and her husband. She said, Hey, Carlos, we didn't meet our enrollment goal this year and, or this semester. So, uh, you can go, you can come in and apply. Uh, and maybe they'll, maybe they'll take you early because I don't have the, the units to, to, you know, make that jump. Good idea. And right. So I was okay. Yeah. And again, presented to me. That's not something that I went and <laughs> had to go find. And I think yeah. that's an, another thing is a lot of times we, we feel like we, um, we got to, and, and especially like when you want to take action and you really don't know where to go. Again, thinking about what it is. Sometimes those things are presented to you. Sometimes you'll be in the supermarket and somebody will say, Hey, you know, did you ever think about this? And, oh, no. And then, you know, years later, you know, something happened. But mm -hmm. So this, this was a similar situation. So I went down there, you know, to fill out the application um, and they rejected me. I got a, a letter in the mail. I said, no, I said, uh, unfortunately we cannot, you know, accept this. And, and uh, I was missing a class is what they told me. Mm. I went to the, uh, to the admissions office and I was talking back and forth again, something pre just presented to me. This is what, this is how, you know, you know, and, and a lot of times we talk about, um, how to know like you're kind of going in the right direction right it's like is this the universe pulling me in this direction or is this just me forcing the issue and so um what i like to say a lot of times is the, uh, the friction is gone right you, you kind of things just start to to kind of smoothly happen and so um again without any kind of you know prompting um i got a call from my uh, junior college uh counselor and he said oh i want to talk to you about your your grades and we're well, okay cool so I had gone in and then I told him the situation. He said, Oh, no, no, no. I used to be a counselor at Cal State San Bernardino. And this, uh, let me show you this. And he went to this book and he, okay, this class counts for this. And so just, you know, like that, I thought, like, oh, okay, perfect. So I emailed the admissions person and kind of going back and forth. Ultimately, um, I got in, you know, ultimately she said, you know what? You're, <laughs> you're a nice kid. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and push it. this through. <laughs> I don't think that that's a valid reason to let somebody in the college, but, you know, it worked for me. So, hey, anything that gets you in is a valid reason is the way I look right, at it. But. Right. And so, and so just kind of thinking about that situation, um, that's a great example of something that I really thought was for me. And the universe told me it's not. The universe said, no, that's not for you. And the universe presented me with what it was for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And all I had to do was get out of my way, right? Where, where, was I, your, I, where, where did your heart I, lie between the two possibilities? Where, where was your heart saying you would prefer to do? If take all, you know, you, you could choose whichever one you wanted. Which way would you have chosen if you had preferred to go that way? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think at the time, um, I don't know. I think at the time it was school. I think my head was telling me to do the police academy and, I, and, and it was logical, right? It's I can be young. Yeah. I can make 85 K a year starting right. work at the beach. You know, like <laughs> it's all the things that you, you, you all the, the reasons that don't, that don't really matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah. And that time the universe corrected me and said, Nope, 
that's not for you mm. and kind of threw me that way and um you're lucky by the way yeah you are. <laughs> right after that is no i mean yeah. and my dad even said he said you know um actually happy birthday dad uh, if you're watching oh, nice. he likes to watch the podcast so <laughs> it's his birthday today so uh yeah, make birthday, sure i don't Mr. forget Bell's that That's but great. um no he, he even told me said um yeah like a few years later just things started hitting the fan with police and and that is not a situation that you know and i i have to say though um there are um there were role models of police that i really looked up to that made me want to kind of do that um uh, a friend of mine billy um who I really looked up to and, and was was really like the opposite cop of you, anybody you'd ever think, you know, just somebody with um, uh, great rapport and just was respectful to everybody and just a great person. And so I was like, you know, I want to emulate that. I want to, you know, become uh, that that kind of police officer. But that's that's neither here nor there. Um, well, no, actually, that's important. Yeah, so, I, I think that's very right? important because, I, well, first of all, I think that most police officers are actually very good people. They yes. don't get credit for that. The ones we hear about are the minority. There's a very small right. minority that they cause problems. They've got issues of their own. They're the ones who show up in the headlines. It's just, you know, it's not a good thing. But most police officers are actually very good people. And yeah, I think I actually, I actually think that uh, the police department should start releasing more uh, dash cam footage of nice things because i think the only time we see dash cam footage is when somebody's getting shot and that kind of if it's 100 <laughs> yeah. percent of the time that we see a footage that somebody's you know being shot unjustly i think that's obviously going to give us a uh you know a mindset but that's just you. you know my opinion and the other thing um, too is i think a, a police officer that truly is a calling i think it's true for any yeah. career but it's especially true for that career and yeah. the fact that you didn't you, you haven't said anything about how you felt called to it that's what told me it really wasn't the right career for you. No, no, it was all logical stuff. I think yeah. uh, my dad being a, an engineer and I do have a logical mind and I was really just thinking about, but it just didn't dawn on me until later. And that's all youth, right? That's all uh, maturity. And, and you talk about those things. And like, as you grow, you, you kind of look back and you're like, oh man, I, I was making decisions based off of this filter of the things that I thought were important. And that those filters change, or they should change. Hopefully, sure. right? Hopefully, they're changing. Um, you know, once you have family, your priorities change, and so on. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I I, uh, I I got into the university, um, got great grades. I don't know where that. I mean, apparently, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, when you don't have to do homework and you can just do well on tests and listen, um, that was kind of my style of learning, right? And so, um, got you know, come graduation get out of there and again not knowing what i want to do because I, I that's the thing is and i feel like a lot of people get that right it's like oh i did this college thing and i'm done okay now, now what you know you know what i mean like this thought that i had four years ago again i'm grown like I, i've grown from that um or um now i have the knowledge well how do i apply this to get to where i need to be right and so i uh I started with a friend of mine. We went into you know business together as uh, for title and real estate, and we were you know, going to different offices and real uh, real estate agents and stuff. And again, that's all logical. That was all like you know, I'm good at selling. I'm good at this. I'm good at that. Um, and then I just wasn't. It wasn't in my heart. So I, I'm I'm big. So I. I kind of flop because my I, and I think I get that from my parents. My dad is very analytical and he's an engineer. And my mom is is this she flies by her 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 feeling like if it feels good like that's good for her you know and so i'm in the middle so i'll try something and, oh this is logical and then i'm like no this is not for me this is not feeling good that's good um yeah no so it's it's a, it's a good it's a good little little combo yeah um but um yeah and then from there i just and i've never done this before um or i guess before this time but i had worked all the way through college so from 16 years old all the way to 24 i worked um and then i said that it was just feeling so bad that i had to let it go i was like i can't and so i let it go i have a job um you know which is scary and i do not recommend that for anybody uh i would definitely <laughs> say get, get a job the first job before you, you know you lose the next one or you go to the next one um but that was a circumstance that I found myself in, right? And but 
I think that's a, it's a very important point that I want to touch on is because life is a feeling process and we talk about manifesting, we talk about um, the biggest part of that is feeling. If you want to manifest something, you want to attach the feeling to it. And so imagine being in a place where that feeling is not possible for you to create. Right. And so now how are you supposed to manifest things from that place? And so that's where I felt that I was at. I was like, this is so negative. This is actually um, a detriment to my future more so than not having it at all. Right. Like being unemployed Mm -hmm. and just going to the gym and looking for a job that was making me happier and giving me those better, that better energy, right. That lighter energy in order to manifest things going forward. And I know that, uh, that to be true because, um, again, unemployed, I had a calling to go back to my university. So they had a, a job fair and Amazon was hiring. So, oh man, Amazon, that's a, that's a really good job. That's a, you know, business, that's what I went to school for. That's what I'm passionate about at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I did it and I got there and, you know, really hyped and, and ready to go, ready to interview. So they, they said, come ready to interview. I'm t- I have a tie on, I'm, I'm, I'm haircut. And I get there and <laughs> they didn't show up. I, I was oh here, I'm, I'm ready to interview. So, oh, no, oh, well, the recruiter, he couldn't make it. He had double schedule with Cup like Pomona. And, but you know what you could do is you can leave your resume on the table here and we'll call you, right? And I'm like, hmm, that, <laughs> I've heard that before, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is a job fair, right? This is hundreds of tables that people are saying, oh, yeah, just leave your thing on the table. Um, but it sounds more like a again, job unfair to me. It was completely unfair. Nobody was there that was supposed to be there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Unemployed very more likely. Yeah. Right. Um, no, but, um, and so this is, this is my point about the kind of the peripheral giving us those lessons. And for me, it was, um, yeah. that, that can be discouraging, right? Oh, yeah. Um, it can be very discouraging, especially when you're unemployed, especially when you're desperate. You're like, oh man, I need a job. But, um, again, staying in a positive mindset and, and thinking affirmatively, like this how, doesn't mean that they're not going to call me, call me. So right. How did you do that? What, what was your way of staying in that positive mindset in the face of unemployment? Nobody's, you can't even get the darn interview because the, the recruiter doesn't show up you know, all these things going yeah. wrong. How do you stay positive? How did you do that? Honestly, uh, faith. Yeah. You know, I think it's easy to, um, have good energy, be positive and stuff when everything's going right. Um, you're tested really when things are not. And really, I think that, um, faith and then also just really, um, reacting, how I'm reacting to, my circumstances, right? So I think that a lot of times we have a lot of stuff that's out of our control and we focus a lot on those things, right? Mm -hmm. And so instead of that, I was like, well, what's in my control? I don't have a lot, right? I don't have to do the job. At the time, me and my girlfriend had broken up. didn't have that either, Um, (laughs) right? But again, the universe moves things around so that you can have what it is that you're supposed to have, right? And... um, Oh man, I just completely lost my my train of thought. Um, well, I was just asking how you stayed positive. How, how did you oh, get right. Positive? So then I'm 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 focusing on the things I can control. My my diet, right? I started eating really healthy, clean, completely clean. Went to the gym every day, make my body feel good, make my mind meditating every day, make my mind you know uh, aligned, stretching, breathing, all those, all these things that. Um, when you don't have anything, all those things are completely under your control. Mm-hmm. And also just, yeah, what, what does this mean? So I lost my girlfriend. I lost, uh, I, I, I quit, I quit my job. What is, why, why am I in this situation? Because there's always, there, for me, there's always a reason. And I think that a lot of people say, Oh, there's a reason for everything, but then they don't really get too deep into that. For me, it's really about uh, the reason not necessarily a good reason for you, right? Or what well, you're thinking yeah, about. It's going to be different for every person. Right. But but reason nonetheless, like it, it might be a lesson. It's like, man, I had to learn how to have nothing mm. so that, you know, I can 
be successful in the future. Or I had to um, move all these things because, well, I'll tell you what it was. So I got, I ended up getting uh, a call up to Amazon uh, a week later. They said, Hey, Carlos, we'd love to have you in for an interview. We're going to set up your flight, which I didn't know was odd at the time. I said, Oh yeah, sure. When I get to Amazon up, uh, up uh, in San Francisco, they say, uh, I'm talking to the other you know, applicants and candidates. And they're asking me, how many interviews have you done yet? I mean, so far. And I'm like, I haven't done any. Oh, no, I've had three phone interviews. I've had five phone interviews. I've had two phone interviews. I've had, I've been for three months. Like, and I just dropped a piece of paper off at a table that nobody was saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, not the, and I went to Cal State San Bernardino. Again, these people are from Purdue, from Northwestern. <laughs> And so, if anything, they should have been grilling me more than any of these people. But again, um, you know, when the universe gives you something that's for you, it's, it is, you know. And so, there's not really um, too much that you can... The only thing I think you can do is really get in your, your own way. Okay. And so, yeah. So, then I had the interview, um, passed the interview. And no, no. I'm sorry. Let me back up. I got the in- had the interview. I met this guy at the interview. He was a very friendly guy, like overly friendly, which I kind of and I'm friendly, but I kind of was like, hmm, let me let me kind of check this guy out for a second. His <laughs> name was Ted. His name was Terry. Uh, he's oh man, did you uh, you want to get dinner? And I'm like, oh God, yeah, all right, cool. We'll go to Buffalo Wild Wings. We're all you know hanging out with some other people that, that interviewed. And he asked me, hey, if you get the job, you want to be my roommate? And I'm like, I don't even know you, dude. Like, <laughs> I have no idea who you are. Like, there's just so many things I'm thinking about. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I'll think about it. And I, then we exchanged phone numbers. And then I did. I, I, I really deeply thought about it because I ended up getting the job. And I thought about it. And I was like, I don't know anybody where I'm going. Uh, I don't like to live by myself. I was like, I don't know this guy, but screw it. Like, this is what, <laughs> again, this was presented to be in such an odd way. It's like, you can't, how do you, you can't, you can't like make this stuff up. Right. And so I get to, um, so we both get the job. Cool. Um, they say, you got to move up north in three weeks. You have to pack up all your stuff and be up north in three weeks. And so we're like, this is impossible. So we have to, so the, like, as soon as we know that next day we drive, from Riverside to Tracy, California. So that's like, I don't know, 10 hours, something like that. Wow. Down Southern California to Northern California to find an apartment. No apartments available. There was like, maybe like, this is a small town outside of Oakland, right? And there's like no, nothing. There's this, there's one ap- apartment complex. Nobody else is answering the phone. Like nothing. There's this, and the, the one apartment complex we go to, the guy says, oh, um, yeah, let me. See. I'll show it to him. And he shows it to us and he says, "Oh, but there's a a, a a long waiting list. There's about seven people on the waiting list, and we only have this one unit available. So, you know, maybe I'm saying probably in uh, probably four or five months we'll have something. Oh, man, wow! But we filled the application anyways. Again, not to be deterred, um, because and I think my uh, my mom said this because something similar happened to her in her career, but she. Uh, she applied for one spot out of, or two spots out of a thousand or something like that. And she was like, and, and she said that she'll never forget my dad telling her uh, because she said, Oh, they're only going to pick two out of a thousand. And he said, who says that? Who said one of those two is not going to be you, you know? And that's kind of the same, you know, thought that you have to have. It's like the odds are this, mm-hmm. oh, well, somebody's going to win. <laughs> Why not me? Mm-hmm. You know? And so on our way back home that same day, they call us and I say, Oh, you got the apartment. Wow. I don't, I didn't ask why. <laughs> I don't know how. You don't even have I, to know how. It's not up to you to know how. It is. It is. Well, and I didn't want to ask the guy either. Like, oh, what happened? <laughs> right. I don't my business. You know? Well, that sounds like something maybe, I would ask, actually. But yeah. yeah. Maybe six people fail a credit check. And that was, that just was my, you know, uh, maybe they were going through some. And so, but. Um, well, the first one had yeah. to drop out, and the next four thought that the first one was going to get it, so they quit, and that left room for you. Yeah. I mean, it, and it could be any of those things. Right. And so, uh, but you're right. It doesn't really, really matter at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, that's what I'm talking about with no friction. It's almost like there's things that should go wrong that right. Mirac- I mean, almost miraculously just turn out right. Mm-hmm. 
and and that always right they don't it's not always something so drastic but when you start to see things like that that are drastic that's when you really are like i start kind of running full speed because that's that's just a this is a sign of, of and it's affirming what i already know to be my future and then through that right you start to if there's any doubt it's it's gone completely right you don't want to have doubt to begin with but even that little inkling when those things start to happen that goes away and that only strengthens your 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 law of attraction so mm -hmm. that's true. um that's true. yeah and that's i mean i talked about story, quitting uh, amazon and that was a whole other chapter but i really wanted to to, to just go over that real kind of section of, of time because i feel like that is very telling um yeah that's good no thanks for sharing <laughs> that story it's a good that's a really good one and it does it has a number of different uh, elements that really illustrate the how the law of attraction works and how important it is to stick with what you're feeling and you did that beautifully right. and not only did you stick with what you were feeling you stayed positive you used pure faith because reality was telling you something completely different <laughs> and you just yeah you didn't buy into reality that was that was one no so you, i think you, too it's it's when uh again the universe taking things away um until almost you only have faith right like that's what mm. else right so it's that's why i'm saying it's like it's all connected and it's and it's very surreal to kind of think about but when yeah. you take a step back and you kind of and you tell these stories out loud and you see these things connecting and i didn't get this and i really really wanted this but it's because man i had such a mountain and a triumph up here that i wasn't it wasn't even in my purview right yeah, like you didn't know that, that, that wasn't that was completely far from my sight and that was only a swing of like a three-year period right and so um yeah, just to just to kind of reiterate that it's it's where you are right now. If that's not where you want to be, if uh, if you've been struggling through some stuff, whatever, like take a step back and really think about why. What am I learning from this? What am I gaining from this? Um, and through again, just controlling the things you can control, your health. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's all good. That's yeah, all good. and just and and just moving forward, you know. Mm. Well, good. Thanks for sharing that. That's really good. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so I'm going to turn it over to Alex now. Now that you, you, you you've had this, the stage set for you, like you have an example, <laughs> right? So, so, what, so what's your story? What's the story you want to share? Well, my story was eerily similar to Carlos's because I also grow. Oh. oh, we got a bit of a freeze. Alex. Hello, Alex. Well, this is disappointing. Can you hear me? Ah, there you oh. are. There we go. <laughs> we thought we lost you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have to let your ISP know. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take two. Take two. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Action. Okay, so... Uh, like I was saying, I also wanted to be a cop. So I went through the whole process and it was easier for me because uh, they were looking for minority females. Oh, okay. So, I, got, I got to stop you right there. We have two people who have pursued <laughs> careers as stand-up comedians who also both wanted to be cops on the same yeah. show. <laughs> yes. Street <laughs> magic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your story. Go ahead. <laughs> but I just want to bring that point to to because that's kind of the middle of my story. That's the I have to go back to the to the beginning where yeah, yeah. in high school, um, I was also an average student, but I wasn't getting uh, the attention that I needed in school. I wasn't getting the full education that I should have because um, I like I had said on my other on the other podcasts is uh, I have Asperger's but it wasn't diagnosed back then. So they didn't know how to teach me. Oh, no. So I ended up dropping out of school twice, actually. And coming back, I went, I went into this program that they had at my school called the dropout prevention program, where they put you in a smaller classroom 
and everything's concentrated. It's basically three rooms and, you know, it's like a little schoolhouse in the, in the basement of the school. So everything's concentrated. You have your own psychiatrist, you have your own um, secretary, you have your own school down there. So it was cool. And then I, and I said, I said to my parents, I said, listen, at this rate, um, graduating is not going to be, I'm not going to graduate with my friends. So what I want to do is my parents were all for me doing whatever I want to do, as long as I had a backup plan. So what I wanted to do was I said, I'm going to drop out, but I'm going to get my GED and I'm going to take it from there. And which was weird because I never, thinking back, I never had college in my mind. And it would just wasn't a thought. I just never thought that I wanted to go to school or where I wanted to go to school. I never applied to any schools. So going back, I um, dropped out of school and the teacher at the GED program told me that I had to take all these classes and, and stuff to get my GED. And I was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I just left the school like 20 minutes ago. I don't need these classes. I know everything. <laughs> so I made a deal with the with the teacher. I said, listen, how about I take the test? If I don't pass it, then I'll come back and I'll pay for these classes that you want me to take. So I took the test. I passed it and I got my GED. So driving back from the uh, GED class, at one night, I passed by a hair school. And it just, and the, this is how things work for me. I notice things out in my peripheral and then they come to fruition like later on. Oh, so nice. I didn't notice that I noticed the hair school, but I was like, oh, there's a hair school there. That's kind of cool. And kept driving. Two weeks later, I get my, I get my letter in the mail saying that I get my GED and I'm like, all right, so what do I want to do with it? And I was like, you know what? I want to go to hair school. So <laughs> went, signed up, everything worked out. I graduated early. I graduated in like eight months or something like that, which is unheard of because it's like a 10 month program, but I went day and night. So it was, oh, wow. yeah. So I finished early, uh, graduated as a color specialist. So as you can, you can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was one of the first things I saw, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it that way. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. I also so, used to work at a hair salon, just uh, so you know that <laughs> as well. I, I was a salon coordinator at an Aveda salon. No way. I worked yeah. at an Aveda. <laughs> so, Come on. But yeah, just, uh, just to so, continue so, so, so the This is like a conspiracy here, between the two of you just to mess with my head. Is that what you're doing here? I mean, <laughs> That's funny because my first job at a hair school was at an Aveda. <laughs> they wanted me to assist. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. I'm not assisting. I'm a hair yeah. salon. Like, I just knew, I knew everything. I was just, I don't know. I was bigger than everyone. So I was like, no, I don't need to assist. <laughs> I don't, I want a chair and I want my clients and that's what I'm going to do. So I found a salon that um, gave me a chair and they were like, okay, do your own thing. So I did my own thing for like, 10 years, no, eight years. And then um, that's when I decided to sign up for the uh, police officer program and passed that test and did everything. And then something happened with my license. Wait, so yeah. curious, curious, going Go back. Ahead. So Go ahead. Walt, Walt asked me about mine. So now I'm curious about yours. So what, what was your kind of motivation for because you had been doing hair for eight years. So that sounds like you, you had a, like a pretty good momentum doing. So yeah. that, again, I, I think that people are interested in, in, in this part of it is like, w what changed in your mind or heart or w what, what is it that made you kind of do that flip flop or that, you know, that pivot? Um, my, my aunt, who was a police officer in Boston, she had passed away. So that's kind of what gave me the jump. Well, it was before she passed away, she was dying of cancer. So I was like, Let me, I want to apply. And I talked to her about it because this was a dream from when I was a kid. So I was right. like, let me talk to her about it. And she brought me through the process and everything else. And 
And then unfortunately she passed away before I got the call that I passed the test and everything else. But, mm. you know, I still wanted to go for it, but it obviously wasn't for me. <laughs> so I, <laughs> <laughs> it was taken away from me. <laughs> I was going to say, what well, was obvious about it, but okay. I think you just answered that. <laughs> well, what happened was, is there was, there was something going on with my license. I had let my, a, a cousin of my cousin borrow well, put his his car in the insurance in my name. And then he did some finagling and it ended up that I couldn't re renew my license come in the in the coming next year. Oh. So to be a police officer and to be in the academy, you have to have a valid driver's license. And I was like, um, but yeah, I'll be able to once I go to the academy, I'll have the money to pay for whatever he did to figure out, you know what I mean? And I was right. like I was like, I have a plan. Just let me just, just let me do my plan. And they're like, no, no, no. And within the next year, if you can't renew your license, it's not going to work. So that wasn't for me. So I went back to doing hair. And then that's when the comedy thing came in. It was random as heck, but it was always a part of me also because my friends were always telling me, oh my God, you're so funny. You should be a stand-up comic. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. So... One day, uh, my mother took me to a comedy show of a friend of hers, and she like I want to say promoted comedy shows, but she like she like did her own shows where she had like four or five comics come. Yeah, on. she produced her own. Yeah, she produced yeah. her own shows. So I, we went to the show, and I and after the show, I walked up to her and I said, "You know what? I would like to try this." And she said, "Are you <laughs> sure?" And I said. And I talked to her for a little while and she was laughing and she was like, you know what? I think you can do this. Yeah. So that's, that's my story. That's how it, it, it just snowballed. How, how, how long ago, how long ago was, was that? Um, 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, so she produced the show and you went, how old were you when, if you don't mind me asking, oops, <laughs> I don't think it's was an that. <laughs> but at the time, if you don't mind, like, or what, you know, where, where were you at in, in life when you made that choice? And Basically, you're like, oh, you in the middle of a Facebook stream. <laughs> I, was living, I was living life. I was, I was at the clubs all the time. I was, I was working at a club overnight, you know, as a shop girl. So I had, I was just anything I could do, I was doing it. So I was at the hair salon, I was doing comedy, I was a shock girl. And yeah, so I, I was, let me see, I think I was 22, 23 at the time. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that, I always think about that. It's like, man, I wish I would have gotten into this a little earlier, but. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, no, I know. I, and I think, I, I, I think that I get caught up like, man, I went to college and maybe I didn't really need to, but, um, there are, but then I think about, there's a lot of stuff that I learned in college that, you know, I definitely use, uh, today. So, yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. all, it's all good. You know, it's all happens as, as, as if, or as it should, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mark Evans, who I does totally the, agree. uh, the Sunday evening podcast with me and Anne Marie McEwen, uh, started as a comedian really late. I think he's in his early fifties. And he's been doing it for like mm. 10 years. So he started later than either one of you guys. Yeah. And he was not a natural comic either. So he had to actually learn that, which was, which, oh. was so it was, it was not, it was not something that came easily to him, but he loves it. And he's very good at it. He's, he's quite a funny yeah. guy now. Well, it is hard to do, even if you're a natural at it, it's still hard. Yeah. Cause you have to unlearn stuff before yeah. you learn stuff. Right. It's like a job, right. You know, like, oh, <laughs> it's, Oh, well, you know, that's not exactly how we do it here, you know? So I was like, exactly. oh. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> very cool. What about, uh, what about you, Walt? I know uh, we've talked about your story. Um, well, I, I actually, yeah. I follow the path of what not to do if you're a law of attraction expert. <laughs> <laughs> which I was not at the time. <laughs> that might be just as, just as valuable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I didn't so learn about the law of attraction. Like, oh my God. Talk about I'm learning late. Right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's what's going on. This is a work in progress, abort, actually. A board mission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I, I did that too, actually, now that I think about it. I aborted a mission. <laughs> but uh, no, I, um, 
I, I didn't even learn about the law of attraction until I was past 50. So, it, you know, it, most of my life I was flying blind. Um, I did, mm -hmm. I did take a Tony Robbins course. So we did have that much in common. I took their <laughs> power course that, that he offered back in the eighties. It was like a, you know, collection of cassettes that you get. Um, but I have to tell you, even after listening to half the cassettes, I was lost. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> it didn't resonate with me at all. Um, I mean, some of it sounded pretty good, but I had such a left-brained um, belief system, which meant that mm -hmm. I didn't have much of a belief system. It was all pure logic, pure logic, pure logic. You know, right. um, I was Mr. Spock. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's like the worst thing you can do when it comes to trying to pursue a career. Now, I've had quite a bit of success um, where my career was concerned, but, and this is the big, but I learned very on, very early on that I was quite computer savvy. I mean, I, mm -hmm. back in the, in the early 1980s, nobody used computers. I was one of the mm -hmm. very first adopters of a computer and that just right. led me, you know, every step of the way, well, I know how to use a computer. Oh, you're hired. You know, it was that kind of a deal. And so I kept going with that. The thing is, I didn't love computers. I was good mm -hmm. at them. I, yeah. I mean, I could just practically drink it in. I, I, I could make sense out of it. Well, actually, the very first time I had to talk to my brother, who was a software engineer, he explained some <laughs> of this stuff. But once he explained it, okay, I get this stuff. I know what to do with this. And that's what I did. I, I could do stuff with it, but I didn't love it. And I kept building a career doing stuff that was related to computers, and I didn't love any of it. You do that long enough, a few things happen. One is... You're just in it for the money. You, you just mm. lose interest in what you're doing. You, you, you learn it because you have to. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I don't know how to describe how painful that is for a career. It's bad enough when you have to learn <laughs> something in school that you don't want to learn, right? It's even yeah. worse when you're being paid to do it. It's like five times worse than, than when you go to <laughs> school. Yeah, in school, at least you can kind of, you know, you can play hooky or you can walk away from it and just, you know, not study or whatever. I, I, I can't do that in the work world. You got to work anyway, yeah. even though you don't like yeah. doing it. <laughs> so that's pretty <laughs> miserable. Um, and the bottom line is, even though I was fairly successful with computers for a number of years, um, I actually got to the point in my life where I ran into a brick wall. The brick wall was, I can't do this anymore. Mm. I, I just can't. And I, it, it's not like I don't use computers. I'm still doing stuff all the time. I mean, my wife's gardening business, I, I do all the computer stuff for her. I, and I help her with the bookkeeping, you know, all the things that I, I'm good at. But so it's not like I, I've stopped doing it. But as soon as I got to the point where I just couldn't make it my career anymore, that's the wall I ran into. I just couldn't keep, I couldn't keep doing that. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. All I did know was that I had just discovered the law of attraction. So mm -hmm. that was in my 50s. I was like 50, 51 when I first discovered the law of attraction. 50, actually. I was 50 the year I saw the, the secret for the first time. So you can imagine. I graduated from school when I was 22 to 50. Do the math. That's 28 years of doing what I didn't <laughs> love. That's, yeah. a, that's a long time to do what you don't love. And, True. And you do it that long. When you run into that wall, you say, well, God, my work life is almost over. What the hell am I supposed to do? You know? It took yeah. me a few years to figure it out. Um, it took quite a bit of studying of law of attraction teachers, but there was one thing that did resonate early on, and that was follow your passion, follow what you love. And I had been trying for years to figure out what it was that I loved, but I always did it the wrong way. I did it trying to figure out what can I do that I love that I can make money at. Right. I'm, okay. I'm, talk, I'm, talk about that a little bit. Well, I think I'm that's here important. to tell you that is absolutely the wrong approach yeah. because you are limiting horizons in ways that you can't even begin to fathom just mm. by doing that. Because the only way you can answer that question is if you can identify a way to make money doing it. If you can't identify it, you eliminate it. Right. Right. So it's completely dependent upon your knowledge of what you can make money doing. That limits yourself in ways that, that you, you don't even begin to understand while you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, I think we talked about, I don't, me and Walt talked about this. Uh, I think it was on another podcast, but it was about uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, right? The, yeah, right. the, wrestler, the wrestler, right? Yeah, we mm. talked about, think about that guy. I think that's a very uh, great example. It's like, mm -hmm. if he was looking for money, he's not going to join the WWE wrestling 
you know, you know, he's going to start, but he, he made that into what he ultimately made it into, which is a exactly. amazing acting career. And mm-hmm. The money showed up because he was, and I, I've heard him talk about it. He just was like, I want to do this. And then he was just very, that's just what he wanted to do. He's very, yeah. very pointed about it. Um, but yeah, it's not like he was like, Oh, I can't make a million dollars in this. So I'm not going to do that. You know? Mm. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been there. I know exactly how that feels. Um, yeah. Now, what did happen was about six years ago, I started doing this podcast. And I've told this story a number of times on the podcast. So our long term subscribers know this, this story really well. But right. basically, I much to my surprise, I found I actually enjoyed doing the podcast, even though there's no money in it yet. You know, there, yeah. there, it was just I, I don't know how long I can keep doing it. <laughs> I just kept loving it. Every single podcast, every single episode, it felt so good afterward. And I never really experienced that before. So even though for six years now I've been doing it unpaid, I keep doing it, which means one of two things. Either I'm just completely insane. That's a, that's a possibility. Or the other possibility is I really do believe that it's going to turn into a, a paying career. And hopefully sooner rather than later, <laughs> because the bills do pile <laughs> up after a while. But <laughs> yeah, but that bec- that also becomes an interesting challenge. Um, I need to take a step back. One of the things that I um, helped to do a number of years ago, actually, it was the same year that uh, the attacks of 9-11 happened. I started getting involved in creating a school. And I've, I, I won't go into the details of it. I've gone into it in the past. It's called the Sudbury Model School um, for kids. And the school was one where the kids actually control their entire workday. So they get to decide everything they're doing all day long while they're at school, which, of course, is very radical. Very unusual. Yeah, I like that. It's a great That's concept. how my program was. Was it? Yeah, that's okay. exactly how it was structured. Yeah. yeah. And, well, then you know how powerful that is because you get to play. Yeah, you get was. to try things. You get to experiment mm-hmm. with things. And and that was that's the point I wanted to raise. Most people coming out of high school, wow. if, you, if you went to any given high school graduation class on graduation day and did a survey to ask them what they were going to do about – probably depending on the school, somewhere between a third to two thirds were going to go to college. About half of them knew what their major were, was going to be. The other half didn't. Um, there was a small segment that was just going to go right out into the work world. They knew what they were going to do and the rest had no idea. And that's because they went through a traditional school system where they had no opportunity to actually experiment and try what they like. Okay. Yeah. So that's a really important component. But even though most of us go through that kind of school system, it doesn't mean we can't engage in the same behavior. We're a little bit more limited. I mean, you you had the direct opportunity. You could actually be in a place where day in, day out, you could do exactly what you wanted to do. Um, But Mm -hmm. even if you have to be working a job while you're figuring this stuff out, you can still pursue. You can still pursue. I'm going to try this. 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 And the ideal thing is to try quickly. To try, try, try. Nope, I don't like it. Try, try, try. Nope, I don't like it. And just keep moving through stuff until you find the thing that you really love. Because if you right. can do that, if you can do it relatively early, find what really creates your passion, you are basically putting yourself right dead smack in the middle of the vortex. You're right in the middle of that place where the law of attraction is going to deliver the best stuff to you because you got yourself there there sooner. So I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's what my main point is. You got you to gotta find the passion first. And if you do, that's, the law of attraction creates things for you. That's a great, that's a great point. Well, I think uh, somebody told me fail early and often. Yes. Mm, yeah. so early and often so like to your point just try it and i think that yep. um that brings up a lot of good points because think about and i think when you think about careers like this like let's say a professional podcaster a musician a stand-up comedian um i have a a theory right and it goes like this it's a lot of people try these things and then, but again, for the wrong reasons, right? And so those people fall off a year in, right? Mm-hmm. And then again, no, nobody's making money, but those people fall off a year in. And then the people that are good at it, but don't like it, don't love it, they stay a little longer, right? They but, have to. <laughs> right, because they have to. And, but ultimately, the people that I feel that are the most successful people, in their field or in their passion is our, our people who completely, they, they have, a, they have that, they have that love that because that's the only reason that you would stick around for 10 years 
and not get paid, right? Or you think about, and that happens a lot in stand up, you know, if you, if you think about anybody that you think, oh man, that guy is really lucky, you know, in stand up, <laughs> not the case, right? <laughs> Joe Rogan. Um, you said who, who else has uh, specials out right now? Joey Diaz. All these guys talk about years, 50, 10, 15 years of just making nothing and just people like, are you crazy? Like, why are you doing this for no money? That doesn't make any logical sense. And to your point, it the doesn't. Is, if you're living in logic, yes, they are crazy. Really, they're, they're crazy for doing what they're doing. And that's the kind of crazy you want to have. It's a good kind right. of crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think, so my point is, uh, there's, a, there's a turning point to where all of that effort, you, you meet that 10,000 hour rule, right? It's like you, you got to the 10,000 hours, but that's because of your passion for yeah. whatever it is that was. And so it's a, um, my theory is that it's a, uh, oh, I can't think of the, the words right now. The, uh, it's a self-fulfilling, self-fulfilling prophecy, oh, okay. right? <laughs> ah, yes. You will achieve. It's not an if. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a, you will. And it's, and it, it's also, um, it's just a matter of time, right? It's just, it's, 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 can you hold on that long? Mm -hmm. And some, yeah. some people can't, it's all, and it's because circumstances, that's fine too. But ultimately, and if you talk to all those successful people, they'll tell you, oh, you know, what is it about now versus when you were not making money at it or whatever. And for the most part, I think like nine out of 10 of them would say, um, I just started really be being me, being, being myself. Yeah. I think it's, I, when you, when you hear these interviews, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and other people interviewing others. Listen, have that, have that ear. It's, it's, that almost comes up almost 100% of the time mm -hmm. is, you know what? I was just, I was trying to find who I was and, and, and then ultimately, you know, and that's why that takes time, right? 10, 15 they're at the point where like now they are 100% themselves. They're completely comfortable. But then that also means that their careers good because they did what they love and then that turned into money. And then the, so that's, you know, it's, it's kind of a, co a uh, culmination, you know, of all it those is. things. So and some uh, that's a, yeah, that was a great too. point. Some people may wonder too, how is it that you can pursue something if you're not getting paid all that time? And the simple answer is you have other means of support while you're doing that. It's, yes. not, it's not your only thing that you're doing, but you have to make the time to do the thing in your spare time. Right. And, you're right. And that's the thing is if, yeah. if you don't make the time, do you really love it that much? That's a right. good question. It's a very valid yeah. question. Yeah. But, okay, so that's, I'm playing the devil's advocate because, so I, I just said that, but I, I've gone through that. And so, like, I'll, I'll kind of interject here real quick. And my, the, the comedy thing, for me, it was a point where it was like, this Amazon thing is too, too overpowering in my life mm -hmm. to allow me to do this. Right. And so that's, to me, that's where I was like, and again, I think my personality type is unique too. in the, in the fact that like, I'm very 100%. If I'm doing something, I'm doing that 100%, but it's very hard for me to do multiple things at that level. So like, for instance, I was working at uh, selling phones when I was in college. And I was making like 90 grand a year. This is like back when, yeah, <laughs> selling cell phones in a kiosk in a mall. Uh, this is back when they Dang. just came, they, they just introduced the no contracts. So phones oh, were flying okay. off the thing. Like it was, <laughs> like, it was like candy, right? Right. Yeah. Right. But then I'm like, they're calling me into work because things are always busy. Oh, yeah. And then they're, well, I'm going to school too. So it's like, well, my school is not doing that well, but it's like, man, I'm making a hundred grand almost. But you know what I had to do? I had to, I had to quit that job. You know what I mean? Because I knew that I could, I was going to give 100% effort here and this was going to go to the wayside. And so to me at the time that the school was important to me. Right. And so, um, that's, and again, that's just my personality. So I can see where people are conflicted. It's like, man, I really love this. I love to paint. But man, when I get, I'm a lawyer, when I come home and I just like, I've been reading all, like my mind is fried. I can't, how am I supposed to do this? And, and it's like, well, well, then I start to question myself. Is, is this something that I really love? Or is this, I'm just trying to escape? It's, it's a lot of, you know, mental mind tricks that, that can be played. But I think that just knowing yourself, right. And, and that for me, 
was the way that I can jumpstart this, right? And so now, obviously, you got to find income. You can't just like, you know, throw all to the wayside. But um, well, this, well, this is going to freak you out because we just used up our hour. We got to end the podcast. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> It felt like five minutes. Yeah, it's like I boom. Know, I, I feel like I was talk. I, I I can talk a lot. So <laughs> well, I, we've discovered. I that. apologize if I didn't. No, give no, 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 I just way. felt like the time was going really really quickly here. So well, that's that, let's carry on the conversation next week. It's a good topic. We'll just sure. continue the same yeah, topic yeah. next week. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, so uh, I hope you guys have a great week. And actually, I'll be talking to both of you in later podcasts this week. So um, we'll talk to you guys then. Okay. All righty. All right. All right, and we'll see you all next time as well here on LOA today. Goodbye, everybody. Good stuff.